What's good, Faith Walkers? Welcome back to the God's Vibes podcast. We've got something exciting starting this week. We are doing something special by request. We are making 30 days of faith walking live again. (laughs) So this program, when it originally launched, it was live. What does that mean? It means that there was weekly live group coaching as a supplement to the 30-day program. So every single week we would gather and you would get to get coached live on the content, which is so powerful and so helpful when you're going through the program. We also created an entirely new workbook that you get for free. This will literally be mailed to you when you join. And we are starting this on Monday, March 4th. It's going to be so fun. Make sure that you join. It originally was based off the Rule and Reign, the Faith Walker Manual that I wrote a few years ago, which is really about how you can walk by faith in any season. It's to help you increase your awareness of the Holy Spirit's presence and experience his closeness in new ways in your life. It teaches you how to apply biblical principles to your life and gain a clear sense of purpose and destiny. It helps you master your soul and live in moment-by-moment intimacy with Jesus, activate kingdom influence and actualize your potential, take your position and encounter the transforming power of God, be a catalyst and release the atmosphere of heaven into your sphere of influence, access the resources of heaven and defy the odds and cultivate radical faith and experience new levels of God's glory. So in 30 days, there are practical guidelines and activations each day. So there's a devotional video that will guide you through a prompt and activation and exercise of some kind every single day. There's different stories and journal prompts, and it really equips and empowers you to explore your emotions, your intentions, your choices, and really how you're living your life to create profound awareness, spiritual growth, maturity, and ultimately authority so that you can truly not just transform personally, but really impact your spheres of influence. So this is a really powerful program. It's something that I was really trying to think, even in the beginning of my relationship with God, what would have been most helpful? It's it's almost as like you get saved and then you are this baby believer and you're like, now what? What do we do? (laughs) Right? And so you might learn some things. You might learn... In Ephesians, right, about the spiritual war that is very real that you're in and the armor of God. You might learn how to really start discerning the Holy Spirit, perhaps, and read the Bible with impartation and revelation from the Holy Spirit. But then you might get stuck, too, because this is not this is not a cakewalk. This is not for wimps. This is a faith walk. <laughs> And the challenges are real. The attacks are real. And so this manual is a go-to that you can really refer to in any season. That's what it's designed to do. But it's so valuable when you can have a spiritual running buddy and a guide on the side to really help you lean in and champion you along the way. So we're going to have some fun in there. This is definitely going to be an accelerator. Um, We might not do it live again. So there is that. (laughs) But if you want to join us live and get coaching every single week and be a part of this and get the bonus journal, I encourage you to register now. Join us. Our first live call, while the program starts on Monday the 4th, our first live call will be on Tuesday. That's when we'll kick it off. So you've got some time if you're hearing this now to come join us. There is a link in the bio or you can go to www.courageco.org and also sign up there as well. But if you click the link in the bio, that's how you can access the free journal and all the details. So make sure you do that. All right. What else do we got going on? We've got a few spots available for the God's Vibes hotline. So if you guys have not heard any of these episodes, I encourage you to go and listen. Essentially, the God's Vibes hotline is free coaching. Free coaching. (laughs) Okay. So all you got to do is you fill out a form And then once you fill out that form, a call will be booked and you'll get to be live on the God's Vibes podcast with me and ask a question and get coaching on it live. Okay, so if you do fill out that form, 
you will get scheduled for a live session. So if you don't want a live session, then you do not have to fill out that form. If you do not show up, you do not get to get coached again. So you will basically be on a no-show list and you won't get an opportunity to coach. We just respect time. We have a culture of honor here. So if you want to get coached, it is free, but you have to follow through. That's really the only requirement here. Otherwise, you get to get blessed, okay? So hopefully you've heard some of these sessions. They're truly amazing. These are real humans, real life stories, real faith walks, and God coaching them through it. It's a really beautiful thing. So if you want to get coached on the God's Vibes podcast, you can fill out the God's Vibes hotline form and join me live. And then if you haven't joined us in Courage Co., some of you don't know It is a community that is off social media because sometimes that could be a lot. We get inundated with all sorts of things on social media every day. So this is actually on a private app and you can join us at www.courageco.org. You can put that in a browser and have you know, a full dashboard experience, or you can also download the app and log in and you can join us from your phone. So whichever preference you have, you can use either. And once you log in, you can stay logged in on the app, right? Or you can stay logged in and keep it open on your desktop. But there's so much goodness in there. We do prayer calls every other Wednesday morning that are prophetic encouragement. We have small groups literally every single day of the week for free that you can plug into and start building community. And then we have a lot of other programs as well. The 30 Days of Faith Walking is an example. We have an entire year of training. So if you wanted to do something self-paced and kind of dip your toes in the water, so to speak, you could do that. We have a VIP mastermind. This is a full-on training program. This is Holy Spirit Boot Camp. The 30 Days of Faith Walking is a bit of a teaser for that. (laughs) So if you really like what happens in there, we go even deeper in the God's Vibes Mastermind. There's also a Life Coach Certification Program and so many other things. And all of that happens over at CourageCo, www.courageco.org. So you can come join us. If you like what's happening here, I encourage you to get connected to other people that can really build you up and encourage you and support you on your journey. We're never meant to walk alone. Life is so much more challenging alone. And that is exactly where the enemy likes to get us as well, so that we're isolated and we are depressed and defeated and discouraged and so many things. But when you get around other people that are walking the faith walk and that are stepping out and finding out how good God is, your life changes in the best way. So I encourage you to come join us over in Courage Go and also book a session for the God's Vibes Hotline. All right, y'all. I thought we might dive into something that really holds us back. I was thinking about Courage Co. because Courage Co. is really birthed from a life of feeling like personally I was not enough or doubting myself out of my destiny, right? Like my core default setting was doubt or it was fear or it was insecurity or it was unworthiness or it was not enoughness. It's, I can't do this. This will never happen. This isn't working. How will I ever figure this out? It was very much that going on in the inside with a lot of force and efforting on the outside. I'm talking perfectionism, high achieving, self-sabotage, right? People pleasing, codependency, so many things just to try to thrive in life when really I was surviving and very far from thriving, (laughs) right? And while I was achieving, I did not have any fulfillment or peace in that, right? And I just thought that is such a hard and a horrible way to live your life year after year after year, right? Just believing and feeling like you're not enough and doubting yourself out of your destiny a day at a time, a step at a time, and a moment at a time. And then I just had this fun thought. I was like, okay, well, if I became an expert at all of that, what if I just flip the script and I just start doing the opposite? What if instead of doubting myself out of my destiny, I just started believing myself into it? What if instead of listening to my feelings, I started developing discipline and self-control and proving that my feelings don't control me, (laughs) right? What if I start 
renewing my mind and actually renewing it with truth, with the word of God, right? Because I was somebody that would seek a lot of, definitely prior to my relationship with God, I was searching spiritually. I had always believed that the spiritual was more real than the natural. Like what is happening in the naturals because of something that's happening spiritually? (laughs) However, I didn't have a language or a full understanding of what that meant. I just felt like there's way more going on than meets the eye. Okay, so I kept looking for spiritual teaching and spiritual teachers, and often they were com- hard to come by, or I would learn things, but they didn't fully resonate, right? And I'm talking things like I wanted to learn how to have peace, I wanted to learn how to build faith, I wanted to learn how to leave a legacy of faith and not fear, I wanted to learn how to break stuff off my family line, like some of these things that are operating and have been for years, like addictions or divorce or different things like that. How do I stop that? Like, how how, how do I make sure that that doesn't continue? This can't be a thing. Why is this a thing? Right. But I felt very unprepared to answer all of those questions. So I thought we might talk about this today because I truly believe that the moment you learn to actually trust yourself and believe that you are worthy, that's the moment that your entire life, the past and your future generations beyond you, right? And really the entire world transform for the better, okay? So sometimes we think in playing small or in falling back or in not asking for too much that we're actually blessing people, and that's not so. And you showing up and you speaking up and you playing full out and playing big with your life, that is what blesses people. Because we don't need to see more examples of people choosing cowardice. We need to see more examples of people demonstrating courage. Okay. And that's really where Courage Co. came from. It was from this desire of helping people embrace living their most courageous and impactful story. I'm like, if that (laughs) could create a movement of people that just decided that that was something worth pursuing, I can't even imagine what would be on the other side of that, right? From all these decisions of people courageously showing up and embracing the the legacies that they alone can leave, right? And that they alone can create. How powerful, okay? But this doesn't happen by default, okay? And really one of the most prevalent forms of this cancel culture that we have in the world is that, that we just actually cancel ourselves (laughs) before we even try anything. We talk ourselves out of things. We don't talk ourselves into them. And that's such... That's such a cancel culture, right? Before you even cancel anybody else, you've canceled yourself first, right? For you to be able to cancel somebody, you've canceled yourself first. That's the only way. So instead of doing that, though, instead of canceling yourself, instead of having the volume way up on your doubt, why not turn up the knowing in your spirit, Okay, why not turn up the voice of God? Why not turn up the truth in your life? Because if you just catch a little bit of that, if you just get a little bit of God's faith, that can change everything in your life. Now, what the world teaches and what is really confusing, I remember when I first became a certified life coach back in 2009. I remember when I first did that, there was a lot of talk about energy. There's a lot of talk about your soul and and your mind, right? And maybe some emotional intelligence. There wasn't a ton of talk on that back then. It's becoming more prevalent now. But the interesting thing about the soul, if you come at this from a biblical perspective, your soul is your mind. It is your will, your ability to assert yourself and, and make decisions, to choose whatever it is that you desire. You have a free will, right? And your emotions, quite literally the energy that you're putting in motion, okay, that you're responding to, that you're partnering with. Now, (laughs) I don't know about you, but there's a lot of teaching that says, trust your heart, okay, or listen to your soul. What do you do with this scripture then? The heart is wicked and and deceitful. Who can trust it? Are you still going to listen to your heart? It's probably not going to lead you to a good place (laughs) or to good people, right? Or if your soul is sick, do you really want to be listening to it? Do you really want your emotions guiding your life? Just your feelings dictating decisions that you're going to make? Is that stable enough? Is that, is that fortitude, right? Is that a firm foundation? Do you want your feelings guiding your life? Is that what you want to build your house on? 
Or if it comes to your decisions and you make poor decisions, especially if they are self-sabotage, addictions, dysfunction, trauma, right? If you're making decisions out of that with your free will, that's probably not serving you and definitely not what you want to be listening to, okay? And if your mind is fed all of these lies and all of these fears and all of these insecurities and all of these doubts and all of this not enoughness and all of this unworthiness, why would listening to that be beneficial to you? <laughs> okay, so for me personally, when I started learning about the soul, not in the way that the world was teaching it or some of these other spiritual teachers were teaching it, when I started learning about it biblically, I was like, wait a minute, this is called crazy making, right? Me trying to build my life on my emotions or build my life on my insecurities or build my life on all these lies that I've stored up in my heart and that I'm thinking about all the time. This is a setup for disaster, just repeating cycles. But how do I fix that? That to me was a profound revelation of spiritual poverty. What do I mean by that? Blessed are the poor in spirit, <laughs> right? When you know how poor you are in spirit, okay, this actually sends you a strong mes message as to why you need and require the truth, okay? And the truth, the word of God is not my truth, live your truth. Well, maybe your truth isn't helping you <laughs> and my truth won't serve you, but the truth is the firm foundation to build your life on and that is what can heal your soul, okay? So when you start encountering the truth, then you can actually renew your mind, okay? And we are transformed. Our entire being is transformed by the renewing of our mind, by our minds being influenced by the truth, Okay, then when we know it's true, we can start choosing it with our free will. And when we start choosing what is true, we actually have this self-control. We don't have to choose emotion. We don't have to choose instant gratification or the flesh or this carnal nature. We can actually move in wisdom, move in wisdom, right? And then when our soul is listening to our spirits, it's like life to your body, so amazing, okay? So this distinction, I think, is very powerful when it comes to knowing thyself and being able to trust thyself. I personally, because of having battled self-sabotage, addiction, trauma, lots of trauma, <laughs> chaos, confusion, high achievement, right? Disappointment, massive amounts of disappointment, failure, loss, grief, so many things, betrayals, rejections, just stacking all that pain, right? Because of that, I didn't trust myself, right? When you lo are, are losing integrity with yourself, when you don't keep promises with yourself, when you abandon yourself, when you reject yourself, it is near impossible to trust yourself. And that is something that I actually could not overcome until I had a relationship with God. And God started healing my heart and renewing my mind and guiding and establishing my steps. Because then as I started trusting him, I could start trusting his power and the spirit of God in me. So then I wasn't just trusting myself. I was trusting God in and through me. Does that make sense? So I feel like this distinction is really, really powerful to those of you that have experienced this as well, right? Well, maybe if I just believe more, maybe if I just try harder, maybe if I just think higher thoughts and just make these affirmations all day, then I'll suddenly believe and then I can manifest and have this reality that I want. I don't know about you, but that never worked for me. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's really important to recognize that because it's subtle. People just tell you to believe more, right? Just believe more and then it'll happen for you or just do these things and then this will happen for you. But that's not the truth. That's not the truth. Okay, and you don't soar to the level of your hopes and dreams. You stay stuck at the level of your self-worth. And that is really, really painful when you have this untold story on the inside of you, when you have these hopes and dreams that you don't even dare say out loud anymore because you've been so discouraged and disappointed. Yes, you don't soar to the level of your hopes and dreams. You stay stuck at the level of your self-worth. So if you don't believe in you, if you don't value you, other people will not either. They won't. And energetically speaking, they will respond to what you're serving, 
right? What you're dishing out, that's what they'll respond to. So if you don't respect you, you'll find disrespect. If you don't honor you, you will meet dishonor. If you don't value you, other people will drop you too. Okay, so this is really important to know. To me, that's a big motivator (laughs) to run to God personally, right? Because you don't rise to what you believe is possible. That would be great if we did that, right? If we could just be like, well, I think this is possible. I'm just, I'm crazy enough to believe that that's possible. But we don't rise to that. We actually fall to what we believe we're worthy of. So sometimes it's not even believing and, and doing the vision boards. That's great, right? Actually catching a picture or a glimpse of what you believe could be possible for you or getting exposed to that. Because maybe you get exposed to somebody that's running a business, let's say, and you're like, I could do that. Or maybe you get exposed to somebody that's earning a certain income and you're like, I could do that. Or maybe you get exposed to somebody that, you know, overcame so many hardships and went and got a doctorate, let's say, and was their first in their family to do it. Now believe you believe that you can do that too. So when you get exposure, it helps you with your belief. And so that's why that saying about you become like the five people you surround yourself with, that's why that's so important. Because if you get around people that don't believe, <laughs> your belief is going to get lower too. But you don't rise to what you believe is possible. So that's that's good, but you don't rise to that. You actually fall to what you believe you're worthy of. So if you see that and you're like, yeah, that'll never happen for me. It's one of those things where you believe that that's possible for other people, but not you. And that's actually a worthiness thing, okay? So in life, you don't soar to the level of your hopes and dreams. You stay stuck at the level of your self-worth. And you don't rise to what you believe is possible. You fall to what you believe you're worthy of. And your body and your soul, right? Your body can feel the shame, the doubt, the insecurity. Your body can feel that. Okay, so you can't fool yourself, just like you can't fool God either. (laughs) You might fool other people around you and tell them that you're good and everything's fine, but you can't actually fool yourself and you can't fool God. Okay, so this worthiness thing is not something that any of us can afford to run from. But the good thing is, is when you transform by the renewing of your mind, you start believing that you're worthy And then that is what transforms your entire life. And that's how this is an inside out journey. A lot of times we try to overcompensate by hustling and by trying to fix all these things on the outside, right? But we actually have got to go inside and renew our minds, right? And pay attention to what's happening in our hearts so we can deal with that. Otherwise, we can't progress, okay? So think about this for you. Do you have some self-doubt to destroy and a destiny to fulfill? What are these little guys? These little self-doubts, right, that are trying to destroy your destiny? What are they? Name them. Name them, okay? Because you can't destroy something that you don't know exists. You have to know what it is, (laughs) okay? And you have to have a counterattack, right? If your doubt is stronger, you have to have something to counter that. You have to make something else stronger, Okay, so I want you to think about this. You are a powerful being. Literally, the spirit of God (laughs) is on the inside of you. That makes you powerful. But what you do with that power is entirely up to you. So it could sit there and be dormant your entire life, literally. And you have access to things, right, that only you can access, And there are plans connected to your life that start to evolve and unfold as you partner with God, right? I have good plans for you, planned in advance that you might walk in them. So God is inviting you onto this co-creative journey. And when you start partnering with him and he starts revealing things to you and you start obeying and taking those steps of obedience, your path with God starts evolving and you get led into every good and perfect gift that he has for you, every good plan that he has connected to your life. He guides you into it. He doesn't lead you in a negative way. He leads you, right, into the future and into hope, okay? So what will you do with this power that is in you? How can you live in alignment with your assignment? How can you be brave and courageous with your life? Wouldn't that mean so much more to you and everyone connected to you? I don't think any of us get to the end of our life and we're like, "Mm, man, I I wish I would have shrunk a little bit more. I wish I would have overlooked, 
you know, all of those dreams and desires a little bit harder. I wish I would have dismissed all of those promptings that I had by God to step out into these good things that he had for me. I wish I would have doubted my destiny harder, right? Like, no, (laughs) right? If we actually sat there, that's common sense. Like nobody actually chooses that or wants that. Okay, but you have to actually ask, what is it then that you do want to do with the power that is you? There's nothing you can do or say or be that could ever make you unworthy of love. And we're all here to master love, to grow and mature in love, God's love specifically, not an idea of love, God's love. And to receive it, to give it, to live it, to be it. And this is our greatest journey on the earth, right? To learn how to and truly be worthy of love, right? People don't need more bitterness and more unforgiveness and more hate and more shame and more betrayal and more rejection. They need love. They need encouragement. They need inspiration. They need courage. They need examples of what's possible with God. And you can be that, okay? So something that's interesting, right? If we simply believed that we could do things, I think we would probably do way more, (laughs) right? But self-worth and and self-confidence are really what create fulfillment in our life. I think sometimes we think it's our doing and sometimes we think it's our achieving, but really it's our worth, that leads to fulfillment. I was talking to a friend about this recently that I feel like I'm probably the most committed that I've ever been in my entire life, meaning my schedule is very full. Not that it hasn't been in other seasons, but what is happening now is I am firing at all cylinders 100%. (laughs) But I don't feel tired necessarily. Before when I was very much working hard and I had a full schedule, I felt tired. It felt heavy. It felt really overwhelming. But I could say on the outside that I still have a full calendar, but I'm like wildly fulfilled and it's super different. I actually wake up excited. I have energy. I've got these bursts of energy and the creativity throughout the day. I love what I get to invest in every single day and who I get to encounter every every single day and how God is moving. It is such a joy and such an honor and such a privilege to me. And that's not always how I felt, but I really do believe it's because of a self-worth connection here. Your self-worth is the foundation of your fulfillment. When you actually value yourself because you value God, right? And he helps you value you, (laughs) you are fulfilled. And so then you're not exerting all of your energy to prove anything. You're not exerting all of your energy to make things happen. You're doing it out of, Love for God, respect and honor for self, and just this desire to obey. Okay, so you're you're letting God really do all the heavy lifting. There's not striving anymore. There's just the effort that it takes to actually create something, but not all the extra effort of overthinking and doubting and then dwelling in the fears and insecurities and holding yourself back and then being super discouraged and taking no action and then procrastinating. Like that is exhausting, That is exhausting, but you're not doing that. You're actually believing God and stepping out, believing God and stepping out. And then maybe you hit a roadblock, but then God helps you overcome and you bounce back even faster. And then you keep tracking and you keep going and you see God move. It's so powerful. Okay, so I just want to highlight a couple of things between the the difference really here between self-confidence and self-worth. Okay, so I want to go through a few examples. Self-confidence is what you show on the outside, okay? Self-worth is what you feel and almost what you know on the inside. And really, if you can get this, it's all inside out, okay? If you know who you are, (laughs) if you know how loved you are, if you know whose you are, if you know how valuable you are, if you know the power you carry, if you know the value of your heart, of your wisdom, of your energy, of your influence, right? You will guard that. You will protect that. And that's an inside out thing. Self-confidence is based on mastery and self-worth is based on identity, okay? This identity is a belief system. It's almost like your operating system, okay? So when you think about your computer, your computer often needs 
updates because the entire operating system has a new uh, refinement. Okay. So then you have to do a whole system update. The phone does the same thing. Okay. But if we don't have the right operating system, then we don't live a life of belief, a life of courage, a life of, of boldness, right? If we believe that we're unworthy, we'll create what unworthy people create. If we believe that we're not enough, we'll spend our whole life trying to prove that we are. If we don't think that we're significant, we're going to try to make sure that other people, <laughs> that our significance, right, is validated in other people. So if they approve of us, it's going to really affect us in such a way. And if they disapprove of us, it's going to crush us in a way that's not healthy at all. So if we're looking for that significance outside of ourselves, we're in big trouble. Okay, self-confidence is what you can do. Self-worth is who you are. Okay, it's the difference between being and doing. Self-confidence is believing that you're skilled enough. And self-worth is just believing that you actually are enough, period. You're not out here trying to prove anything. You're already enough. So if you're already enough, what do you do when you're already enough? You don't overcompensate. You don't try to like prove anything. You just deliver. <laughs> you own who you are and you just deliver what you've got. You give what you have. Self-confidence fluctuates based on your environment. This is where all the um, chameleons come from. These shapeshifters, right? They can just give you what you need in the moment. Well, that's actually an insecurity. You're afraid to actually share yourself with the world for fear that you might be rejected and not accepted or approved of in some kind of way. But self-confidence fluctuates based on your environment. Self-worth is stable in every environment. This is so freeing, if you can understand this. Essentially, you're not wearing a mask and you're not shifting personalities every environment that you step in. Like you're one person at work, you're one person with your family, you're another person with these friends, and you're another person at church, right? Like you just keep changing who you are. That is not how you're designed to live. You're actually meant to just be who you are in every environment. Self-confidence is fragile. It's something that can change. Self-worth is foundational. Self-confidence is the belief in your abilities as a person. And self-worth is the belief in your value as a person. Self-confidence is I'm striving to earn love. Self-worth is knowing that I already am. Right? If I'm not trying to earn love, like if I just believe that I'm loved by God and I am love, right? Like love is a person. And because I'm connected to God, I look like God, <laughs> right? When I'm aligned with love, I just naturally flow in it. So if I am love, then I just show up and do what love does. That's just what I do, right? But if I'm trying to get love, then I'm trying to do all sorts of things that likely are messy and don't make any kind of sense because really I don't believe that I am worthy of love or that I'm lovable, right? Self-confidence then, right, is I'm striving to earn love. I'm burning all my energy trying to get people to love me. And usually it's people that could never actually see my value or love me anyway. Self-worth is already knowing that I am love and being loving. Self-confidence gives you drive. It's like ambition, right? Self-worth gives you peace. Amen to that, <laughs> right? I have more peace in my being as a human than I've ever had in my entire life. And to me, that is success. That is winning. Peace is expensive. And you only know that if you've never had peace in your life. But having peace on the inside of you, meaning that your mind isn't constantly racing, your emotions aren't all over the place, your heart isn't heavy and broken, your spirit isn't broken, you're just wholehearted and courageous. There's a lot of peace in that. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't face challenges in life or, or things still happen that don't make any sense, but God is with you in all of those and you walk through them with him, which is entirely different, okay? Self-confidence is optional. Self-worth is essential. Self-confidence eventually surrenders, but self-worth ultimately prevails. Self-worth is your foundation. Self-confidence is the house you build on top of it. And your house will only ever be as secure as the foundation it's built upon, right? If you've ever 
known anyone, right? If they've had to redo the foundation of their house because maybe they built on uneven ground or maybe they were in a flood zone or different things. If your foundation is messed up, your whole house will start cracking and falling apart from the bottom up. (laughs) Your life is the same way. When your foundation, when your heart is sick, when your spirit is broken, when your soul is traumatized and confused, when your mind is all over the place because of all of that, you're going to have a very broken life. Okay? Self-worth is your foundation. Self-confidence is the house you build on top of it. And your house will only ever be as secure as the foundation it's built upon. Okay, so really, really important. Hopefully you're seeing that this inside out journey is never something to be underestimated or to avoid. It is necessary. It is essential. And every time you show up inauthentically, every time you're an imposter, (laughs) every time you break a promise with yourself, you break integrity with yourself to make others happy, to please somebody, to cut a corner, to get ahead somehow, to take a shortcut, You tell yourself you're unworthy and you're not enough of the real deal. So self-confidence without self-worth can feel like success on the outside, but failure on the inside. And usually this comes from achievement. We're trained to be achievers. We're trained to be achievers. This whole pursuit of happiness thing or really just adulting in general, it's a scam, (laughs) right? Achievement does not lead to love or fulfillment. It does not. But we have this interesting idea in our mind somewhere, deeply ingrained, that that's true. All the things that we strive for, really in any area of our life, all come down to one simple thing. We hope they'll make us feel enough and loved. When I get this, then I'll be enough. When I get this, then I'll finally feel worthy and like I I matter. When this happens, then... When I get here, then, that's what we tell ourselves, right? And if you don't believe me, maybe this sounds too simple. Let me break it down for a second. After their most basic needs are met and they're financially secure, why is it that most people still want even more money? To buy things? Why do they want those things? To feel important, to gain external admiration, or for the positive emotions they expect to experience when they have them? Why do they want that? Because underneath all of it, they want to feel enough and loved and they believe that acquiring these things will give them these feelings, right? Often people get married when they don't want to. They make decisions to avoid feeling like they will be abandoned, have kids when they're not ready, and take jobs they dislike, all to get their families or society's approval to fulfill the same hope and need to feel enough and loved. So many of us spend the majority of our lives on the unhealthy diet trend of the moment and spend countless hours and money to try to look a certain way. And now it's even worse. (laughs) Others take harmful drugs to enhance their muscles or trade the maximum amount of their time on this earth for the maximum amount of money, prestigious cars and job titles they can acquire, all with the underlying belief that the closer they get to this aesthetic ideal, the more they'll be enough and loved. And these beliefs are often reinforced as truths by well-intentioned people around us and just about every advertisement that we see, especially now with the introduction of social media. That's all that's happening. We're just constantly inundated with more. And none of these things that we spend so much time striving for actually lead us to the true feeling of being enough, truly loved or truly fulfilled. They just keep us on a hamster wheel. They just keep us chasing. And what you chase, hear me, what you chase will always elude you. If it's money, you'll never get it and you'll never have enough. If it's people, you'll always run after people that don't value you and don't have your heart. Why? Because you're chasing them. If you're chasing them, they are not for you, (laughs) right? If you run after deals and things that are not for you, you will end up crushed. Whenever you're looking for a rescue, you will always find an oppressor. Always. Always, always, always. Okay? When we think that when we get something, when we get someone, then we'll be enough, then we'll be truly loved, then we'll be fulfilled, these beliefs don't foster fulfillment because they aren't truth. 
at all. And they're all based on a lie that you need to achieve to do more and be more in order to feel love. Lies, 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 lies. But imagine, right, if you already believe that you are love and you feel love by giving it, (laughs) right, then you have an entirely different life. So picture this, okay? I like to use the analogy of a, a hose, okay? So just picture that you've got this garden hose, let's say, all right? And the hose, okay, is your connection to God. What flows through the hose, the water, right, is love, okay? So for you to feel love, you have to let God's love flow through you. And the interesting thing is, is when it flows through you, you get wet. (laughs) So the quickest way to feel love is to give it, to start letting it flow through you. Not to go get it from somebody, but to give it, to give it. That's why it says outdo one another in showing love, right? Get really, really good at practicing love, not at being right, at getting to love faster, okay? So remember this, no matter what you accomplish or what you finally make happen in your life, you still have to take you with you. And if you are miserable, you will be miserable at whatever level you get to. You're still going to have you there. You will be miserable at whatever level you get to, okay? So cultivating self-worth inside of you is one of the greatest ways to love yourself and to love other people. It's not something that you can just get to later. It's something you must prioritize now. Cultivating true self-worth is one of the most generous pursuits, not only for your own fulfillment in life, but for your capacity to show love to others, right? Think about what might you be showing other people right now. When they watch your life like a movie, what are they learning? What are the lessons? What are the insights? What are the key takeaways? When they study you, what are they learning to master? I really thought about this. Um, My youngest sister that I was raised with, she's seven and a half years younger. So she was essentially a baby, right? (laughs) And I was changing her diapers and all the things, okay? But growing up with a sister that was seven and a half years younger, right? She would look up to me over the silliest things. Like I really started to realize this because we went to a Catholic school growing up and so we had to wear uniforms. And so, you know, there was all sorts of rules with this. Like your skirt had to basically only be like an inch above your knee. You had to wear your socks pulled up. (laughs) Um, Then uh, you, you had to have your shirts tucked in. There was just like things that you had to do all the time, right? So there was one day, apparently, I don't remember doing this, but it was hysterical in hindsight, I apparently wore these socks that you fold down that had like little ruffles on them and I folded my socks down and I must have wore, I don't know, K-Swiss or something, right? At the time. Well, she almost lost her mind because she thought that the style was wearing your socks up. (laughs) And she didn't know. She didn't want to miss it. She thought, you know, she wasn't consulted on this new trend. So I started to notice something so little like either pulling your socks up or folding your socks down was something she was studying. She also watched me... I was a gymnast, okay? So she would study how I would practice all the time or how I would come home with all these medals and all these different things and see me, you know, put them around my room and she would just come study them and play with them. But she was learning things. She was studying things all the time. And then there came a season, particularly in college, where I was really struggling, very much struggling. And she saw that too. And I saw her see that. And that crushed me because I knew that I couldn't really stop what I was doing. I was really battling a lot of uh, body dysmorphia, eating disorders, just all sorts of things that were out of control because my life was out of control. I didn't want her to study that. I didn't want her to learn it, but I also couldn't stop. And it was this really, really hard position to be in. But think about that. Let that be an example for you. I, right, did not want my younger sister to to study that or to learn those habits from me, right? I wanted her to have the best example and the best life possible, and I couldn't be it, and that was crushing to me. I was discovering that I couldn't be perfect, that I couldn't please everybody, that I couldn't meet all these standards that I kept trying to meet, right? That I couldn't achieve all of these things that I was trying to achieve. I just couldn't because I was human, and I didn't know God, right? So I didn't have this example of strength 
to show her because I was really hurting and really broken and nobody knew. Nobody knew. So I had to have this moment where I sat with her. I sat her on her bed and I said, hey, I know that you see that I'm doing some things that are not okay and I'm really struggling and I don't want to be doing these things. Don't follow me. Don't follow me here. I'm going to heal. I'm going to get better. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get better, but don't follow me here. <laughs> right? Uh, that was super powerful. Really, really powerful to be able to do that. But it, it was such a great example to insert here. Think about this in your life. What are your kids learning from you? What are your friends learning from you? What are your peers learning from you? Are they learning to overcome? Are they learning to get deliverance? Are they learning to uh, heal? Are they learning to evolve? Are they learning to progress? Are they f discovering peace? Are they finding wholeness? What do they get when they get you? That is the greatest gift that you can give somebody. Your example, your love, your presence. And you can only experience the depth of love, of intimacy and connection with another person as the depth you love and intimately connect with yourself. And this is really where I discovered that my desperate need for God, right, was. This is how it got exposed, was I was not loving myself, I was hating myself. Like the levels of trauma, dysfunction, betrayals, abandonment, rejection, all the things just started to caused me to implode, really. I couldn't get up under the weight of all of that from the inside out. I didn't have enough belief in self. I didn't have enough, I didn't have anybody nurturing or cultivating identity in me. And eventually that got so hard because all I heard was the loudest inner critic, right? So much self-hate, so much insecurity, so many fears, so many doubts, so many lies. And I couldn't get out of that. I could not get out of it. I was literally in a prison on the inside. And I know some of you know what that's like. You might be there now. Okay, but that is not where you have to stay. That is not where you have to stay. And true self-worth can give you a stable, dependable, unwavering, unshakable sense of mental and emotional armor, unlike self-confidence, right? And, and this, this level of fortitude isn't easily swayed by the devil, one, by feelings, by thoughts, by behaviors, by experiences, by other people, by external forces, or anything, really, that life will throw your way. That makes you a powerful person. But that, I believe, is only possible through relationship with God. I did not know love apart from God. And I could not love me apart from being loved back to life by God. And then I couldn't extend real love that has power, <laughs> that has fortitude, that has boundaries, that is stable, that is solid, that is unwavering, that is secure. I couldn't extend that until I really started to cultivate that with myself, right? And now this woman, right, that could not be confident in the world really is, right? Or that ran from confrontation can do that in love, right? There's so much, like I have a completely different life now, with way more freedom and way more peace than I ever thought possible. But that costs something. That costs something. So I want to offer this idea. If you're not on the God's Vibes Insider, I recommend that you get on there. That is a weekly email that I send out with encouragement. It's also a monthly newsletter. So you have a sense of what's happening beyond some little updates that you'll get here on the podcast or from posts that you might see in Courage Co. So I highly recommend you get on that. You can get on there over at julianapage.com. Just put your information on the homepage. You'll get a free audio download, which is really fun. But get on there. There's a lot of great teaching and a lot of inspiration that is super powerful that you'll get emailed straight to you in a way that is not spam, okay? Because I don't like spam, so I don't spam, period. So I wrote a powerful message the other day, and it's, it's from this analogy. So I ran college track, okay? I was a college track athlete, and I had this interesting thing going on. So I ran track in high school too, and that's where I really fell in love with it. I hated running for the record. So this was not an innate thing that I loved to do. I did this race in eighth grade. We had to. It was like this keep kids off drugs sort of thing. So they forced you to run a 5K. And my strategy was I'll just run this fast so I'll get it over with. <laughs> 
Well, I didn't know that in high school that would cause people to recruit me to be on the track team. And the track coaches were in two classrooms directly across from my locker. So they just recruited me to run. And I didn't know what any of the distances were in track. Honestly, I had no clue. I'm like, what is an 800? What's a four? How many times around are we doing this thing? I had no idea. I didn't run track, right? So they would just tell me what to do and I would just run. (laughs) So I got to run on the four by four. That was one of my favorite races. And I was the anchor because I had this interesting thing. So my personal bests were always in relays. My personal best times were always in relays as the anchor. I couldn't get them when I was just running a 400 by myself, right? A personal best, but I could get them in relays. It was the craziest thing. But I have it in me to show up for other people, right? More so than I would show up for myself. And that was just something that was innately in there. But I think it's interesting. Something that I was learning in track was you often celebrate when you win, right? Like you punish yourself and punish your, yeah, I mean, kind of, right? But like <laughs> punish yourself, meaning you go through all this training. It's rigorous, right? They would say things like, it's an all weather track. You run in all weather, right? I don't care if it's thunderstorming, you're still running on the track. It's crazy. I don't care if it's snowing, you layer up and you run, right? So it was intense. And you go through all of that for like seconds, And then you get a victory lap where you just get to run around and celebrate with your entire team. Okay, so I wrote about this because I feel like it's a fascinating concept. I feel like it's backwards because we spend our whole life trying to get to a victory lap. And that just doesn't seem fair. It's really hard to discipline yourself over and over and over to the point of punishing yourself. Right. And then getting a little bit of celebration, if that at all. Okay. So maybe you, maybe your whole life, you felt like victory and winning was something that happens to other people, but not you. Have you been there? Those people get to win. Those people get that kind of life. I don't get that life. Maybe you felt like you have a long way to go or so much to prove, or you have to be so much smarter. You have to work so much harder before you'd ever consider that you've even won. Those things, what I'm suggesting for our self-worth today is that all those things are lies. The term victory lap, okay, ordinarily applies to something that happens after you win or at the end of something. But the faith walk (laughs) requires you to celebrate in advance, to run the victory lap ahead of time. To actually like keep running the victory laps and live in this constant state of expectancy and celebration by faith, right? So what if this victory lap doesn't have to actually do with actually winning the race or attaining a goal on the outside, but it has everything to do with having the victory within, okay? Because the moment you begin to lift the heavy burden of unworthiness and begin to believe, then know that you are fully worthy, that's the moment your lifelong victory uh, lap can begin. So what does this mean? Instead of waiting to the end of your life or the end of a thing to run a victory lap, what if we can make our entire life from this point forward for decades to come feel like? A victory lap, right? If everything you're trying to do is to just get the feeling of something, why not (laughs) activate it now? You can actually choose feelings too. You don't just let them happen to them, happen to you. You can choose them, okay? The kingdom of God is a perfect example. You can, by choice, by free will, live, put a demand on righteousness, peace, and joy every single day. That literally can be your home, your home base, Okay. Now what this doesn't mean, this doesn't mean that life won't still be hard, often too hard. It doesn't mean you won't stumble and fall and face setbacks. It doesn't mean that you're no longer focused and you're not actually walking towards something. It doesn't mean you're you're even close to doing or giving or serving or creating or building or offering all of your talents, your gifts, your passions, businesses, and ideas in the world that you still plan to. It simply means that when you do all of these things as part of your victory lap, you're no longer trying to carry the billion pound weight of unworthiness and not enoughness at the same time. 
When you win the victory on the inside, you're infinitely more powerful in all that you want to do, create, give, serve, build, ideate, love, change, and impact on the outside. And when you know that you're truly enough, exactly as you are, your worth is secure. Your worth is secure. You're now going after your hopes and dreams from a place of security and freedom, from a place of peace and wholeness, not from striving. And life is so much more beautiful and you can fight even harder for the good stuff and recover even faster from the bad stuff when you don't have the weight of unworthiness on your shoulders on top of it all. You can still find great self-confidence and working towards becoming the highest and truest version of yourself while your self-worth is fully intact, independent of it all. You save so much energy this way. And when you know your worth, you move different. You'll feel your creator with you in the breeze on your skin, the sunlight on your face, the wind at your back, the blades of grass and wildflowers on the side of the track, right? You're like way more in the moment. You're way more present. And while we're all running at our own pace, our own race, we're also all running together. And we each have the power to pass a baton and invite and inspire others to start their own victory lap knowing they're worthy exactly where they are right now. There's nothing they have to do. There's nothing they have to prove they're worthy now. And you have the power to cast off the weight of not enoughness from your shoulders for good and begin running your victory lap beginning today. You can embrace that everything that happened before in your life was all happening for you, not to you, but for you. It's all been divinely orchestrated, even the hard parts. You made it through and now are a living, breathing example of wisdom, perseverance, and strength for how others can make it through similar situations too. So that question that I asked before, what will you do with the power that is in you? What will you do with the power that is in you? Every day inside Courage Go, we are cheering you on (laughs) as you live that answer fully. Whatever that is, you're, you're risking, you're stepping out, you're renewing your mind, you're getting new revelation, you're taking bigger risks, you're being seen for who you are, you're allowing people to love you and support you and hold your arms up when it's hard, right? We have so many people that are walking through so many challenging things, but God knew that and brought them all together to do it, right? Whether it's a season of grief, whether it's a season of loss, whether it's a season of rebuilding, whether it's a season of preparing and training, whatever it is, you've got a community that can run with you. Okay, so I want to encourage you, if you are not in 30 days of faith walking, I personally believe this is something that is a great start for anybody in their life. You can do a 30-day challenge multiple times over throughout the year. This happens to be live, so you've got people running with you, and you can build those connections right now. So I encourage you to get into that program. I encourage you, regardless, to join us inside the Courage Co. community for free. Plug into these small groups, build community. Do not do life on your own. Help other people mirror back to you how amazing you are, how powerful you are, how brave you are, how courageous you are, how much you've overcome, how much God has in store, the gold that's in you, all of the the valuable, valuable things that you are here to create, (laughs) all the moves that you're here to make to impact people. Let people hold that up and remind you of all those things. Be willing to be seen for how amazing you are. Come join us, www.courageco.org. So the message, the takeaway for today that I really want you to reflect on is what do people get when they get you, right? What What do they study? What do they learn? What are their takeaways? What are their lessons? Not even if you sat down and had a conversation, if they just study you. What are they learning, right? Just picture a kid watching you and imitating you. Do you want somebody to imitate what you're doing? If you don't, maybe like me, you're starting to see that spiritual poverty is the worst kind. And it's one that only God can solve. It's one that only God can feed and resolve. And that's actually one of your most powerful positions, surrender, okay? And when you come to God and seek him with all your heart, you will find him and he'll start ministering to those places and start helping you renew your mind and start revealing to you how much he loves you and how loved you are and how he sees you. And you'll start believing it and you'll start living it. 
But often we can't change our beliefs on our own. We can't just think higher thoughts and poof, we arrive somewhere. Right? Because deep down on the inside, we actually don't believe it. And our life will rise to the level of what we actually believe that we deserve and that we're worthy of. So we've got to get God's perspective on that and build on that foundation, a firm foundation. We don't want to build on sand. We don't want to build on sand, right? We might get some traction, but unless the Lord builds the house, it's not going to stand. Okay, so where right now, maybe do you have some self-doubt, some unworthiness, some not enoughness destroying your destiny? What are those things? So that you can get honest about that and turn those over to the Lord. What would it look like for you to start building a life on the truth? To not let your emotions call the shots. To not let your logic or reasoning take the lead. But to let God take the lead. Right? Jesus take the wheel. (laughs) And then who might that impact? What if they got something that was solid? God's love. Something that was stable. Something that was unwavering. Right? What if they had an example of courage? Overcoming deliverance, breakthrough, transformation, freedom, peace, wholeness, prosperity, joy, <laughs> right? What Faith. What if they got a legacy of faith from you? What might that be worth to you? You can't even put a dollar amount on that. But people are watching us every single day. The world is getting darker every single day. That doesn't mean turn up, down the light. It means it's turn up season every season. <laughs> turn the light all the way up. All the way up. It's time to come up higher. And I encourage you, do not try to do this on your own. Get around other people that can run with you and that know what this walk requires. <laughs> okay? And that can support you along the way and doesn't want to compete with you. They just want to see you win. They want you to run a victory lap right now. I hope this mess has blessed you. If it did, I would be so honored if you would subscribe to the God's Vibes podcast or maybe even share this with three, five, I don't know, 10 friends, family members, whoever you you think would be blessed by hearing this. This is how this podcast can grow, how it can expand, how it can get into hearts and homes. You get to be a part of that. And that would just be such a blessing to me if you could do that. So subscribe to the podcast leave a five-star review. So you can go to Apple Podcasts and rate it five stars and leave a review. And when you do that, don't stop there. I'll actually send you the 30-day God's Vibes Matter devotional. So make sure that you also go to julianapage.com slash podcast and put your information there. And I'll make sure to send you that devotional as well. That devotional is such a great way just to have a daily practice of building intimacy and connection with God. So it's a great gift just for subscribing. So I'd be so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that is listening. Thank you for investing your time here and investing in yourself. You are your greatest investment. And I'm just so honored to be a part of your journey, even if it's in a small way. So I hope this message blessed you. And until next time, stay blessed. Listen, if you are not plugged into Courage Co. yet, what are you doing? Courage Co. is a faith-based community off social media that you can access from your phone or your desktop literally from anywhere. It is a safe place and a sacred space for you to invest in and live your most courageous and impactful story. You can join us for free for prayer calls and challenges, for a monthly subscription where we have monthly masterclasses, or the God's Vibes Mastermind where you will get live master life coaching at a price that you won't get anywhere else, 12 weeks of content that we will go through together or you can navigate at your own pace. You'll have lifetime access to that. A community of women doing this alongside of you, a workbook and so many other materials to help you on your journey. And I just want you to imagine for a second, having the courage, clarity, and focus to achieve anything you desire. Walking into any situation, fully confident, knowing you have everything you need to succeed. Embracing challenges and overcoming obstacles with grace and ease. 
feeling only love and compassion for others, no matter how they may have hurt you in the past. Standing up for what you believe in and taking unstoppable action to create the kind of world you want to live in. You're in the right place to take your next step on your journey. When you plug into the God's Vibes Mastermind, I'll teach you how to identify and eliminate the self-limiting beliefs and habits that are stopping you from getting the results you want. I'll teach you how to heal old wounds that have negatively impacted your self-image and self-esteem for far too long. I'll show you how to dismantle the story of who you are and what you can or cannot do in the world. I'll help you expand your consciousness from fear-based limitation to love and compassion and service to the world. I'll help you vanquish the inner enemies that are stopping you from being all that you can be. Release your victimhood and reclaim your power. Develop a aligned mindset and habits to boost your productivity and results. Gain deeper awareness of your own inner light and divinity and achieve the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual self-mastery needed to achieve any goal. You will learn how to think the way God formed, shaped, and anointed you to think and succeed the way he always intended and show up in any situation as the most powerful person in the room, no matter what challenges might appear on your path. If this sounds like something that you want to be a part of, I want to invite you to join the God's Vibes Mastermind. You can get plugged into it over at Courage Co. You can access Courage Co. at any level at www.courageco.org. Together, we will awaken your inner warrior spirit and unleash your capacity to achieve any goal you can imagine. You will become an example of what's possible with God.